Hi, everybody. Today, I've got the beautiful Marcella Onyx. She's one of the incredible medical intuitive students, but she's been doing healing work for a long time. And she's so powerful and she's so much fun to work with. I'm so grateful that I had her on this journey with us. And I'm just going to hand over to her so she can tell you a little bit of what she does and how she follows her divine life purpose. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Hi, Marcella. Hi, Sky. Thank you so much for having me. It has been a pleasure, I must say, be your student and know you for, for years now, uh, but totally different, you know, when you are on the other side, really, and you just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it has been an amazing experience. So the way I work, well, I like to say that I connect with the client and I'm there at service. And I feel what the client really needs because sometimes we come to a session and we feel that we have a need. But as we work through, we just allow the divine to show us the truth and show us what we really can help the client as a breakthrough for the session, for the highest good, really, and always works out. <laughs> yeah, you're, you've got, yeah, I, ever since I've known you, you're just one of those one of those beings that's got such a strong connection with creator and you've got you really hear your divine guidance so clearly you know it's like crystal beam clear um you know so it's it's a very beautiful it's a very beautiful thing to see and it's an incredible gift to be a part of that yes it has not been always like that but uh, as part of our growth journey we need to learn how to heal ourselves how to be a good listener <laughs> <laughs> and then we can be at service <laughs> yeah it's it's a, it's funny isn't it how what, the further along you are on the journey the more you forget about the beginning and then I had a few times where creators nudged me this week going hey sky you want to take a look at how far you've come like you're being a little bit hard on yourself like you want to just see how far you've come um so it's it, it does take a lot of dedication and devotion to a higher power doesn't it Indeed. And that happens also with our clients because all the time they show up to a session, they just focus on the pain, on the suffering and all the blockages that may be facing through their life. They, they really forget to look behind and see how much they also have been through their journey that have made them stronger and resilient to be there, to be willing to want to be a best version for themselves, to ask for help. You know, because it's not easy. And especially when we deal with trauma, we know it's not easy. You know, as part of the, your beautiful program, we have to face our own trauma tree. And I must say, this was one of the most challenging exercises I have done. <laughs> but then it's so interesting. Once you start and you go through that journey, you realize that your first trauma is connected with everything else and repeating patterns until you actually learn you know, that beautiful lesson that the divine is trying to support us for our journey for He say, okay, once you understand this, then you will feel you experience a huge shift in your journey. And it's also beautiful when we see that for our clients too, they, they shift that energy and that beautiful release and all of those aha moments and that beautiful time of integration too. It's, I think I remember when the, when I first channeled my own trauma tree, which was almost 10 years before I created Medical Intuitive. And um, I remember kind of being angry about it, actually, and being like, why, you know, why are you showing me this? And also, why so much trauma? You know, why so much suffering? And um, I remember that it, it was so clear, but it was, you know, when it's clear and the clarity is so beautiful that it kind of, it brings on like a, a release and at the same time, like a respect, because humans, we're kind of by our nature, unconsciously arrogant, right? Mm. So we're, the fact that we're so hard on ourselves mm. is exactly because we don't get how much we've been through. And that simultaneously is why we can't go forward. Because if you don't respect your light, if you don't respect your strength, then you don't trust yourself. Yes. Right? And it's like, God is really was so clear. Like, I'm not showing you this stuff to hurt you or to re-traumatize you. I'm showing this stuff because you refuse to see that everything that was meant to have broken you didn't break you. Yes. You know, you know you're know, you completely blind to how strong you are. You still think you're hmm. weak. You still doubt the strength. And that's a huge deal, I think, for most healers because we're just like, oh, 
anybody can do that you know mm-hmm. anybody can go through that stuff and still be a good person and that and it's just not true it's a, it's a it's a strength it's a virtue you know to choose love to keep focusing on you know that deeper power and that deeper love of the universe no matter what happens um and i think so many healers have no idea like i said of their own strength and their own beauty and how much they've already overcome mm-hmm. And something else that is also beautiful through this journey that you take us is making us realize that uh, everything that we manifest in our lives, in our bodies, it's, it's literally that disconnection from ourselves and the disconnection from the divine. And, you know, sometimes you think, no, I love God. I know he has my back. He protects me. But this is not the truth. You know, how many times you felt betrayed, <laughs> you felt unfair and just as, why me? <laughs> why do I need to go through all of this challenge? You know, and, and you feel that God is not there for you. But once you go through these beautiful sessions and you realize, wow, there was a beautiful lesson behind all of that. And yes, God was always there for me. And I was so disconnected of my own self of my own higher self that I was not able to feel, to listen. All of the love and the support that was there for me. It's mad, isn't it? Like I, I'm going to, that is what you just said is so powerful, but it's so true that the moments where we think God abandoned us is where we abandon God. It's because that voice that it does go everywhere. It's always everywhere, but the pain can be so much that we can't stand it you know um but it's 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 such a huge thing to realize god is always with you you know was always with you through everything and i th- i honestly think it's probably it's a game changer i think it's the only thing that gives me the courage to keep going especially when things happen that are very out of the control or very um very painful you know to kind of blindside you um you know and it gives you that courage to go like okay I've been through very painful things before and I didn't think I'd overcome it. I didn't think I'd get out of it. I didn't think there was a problem. And I always, God always found a way. So I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know God is making a way. You know, it just puts you in a different, puts you at peace faster, I think, than when you're um, still think that God isn't there or that you've done something wrong. Isn't that, that's where we go to, right? What did I do for God to leave me? <laughs> yes, indeed. And then we, we also put ourselves in that place of shame because we feel shame of uh, whatever we feel or we believe we have done wrong. And sometimes it was never about us. We was only part of a, a lesson of someone else's too. And our lesson was actually not allowed some certain projections, certain collective limiting beliefs, you know, go into our own energy field. It's very strange being, like I said, being so connected to God and, and, carrying the messages so that you can meet the person at every level yes you know it's it's strange knowing that nothing is really real except love and at the same time like you said navigating the unconscious mind navigating the soul navigating these Mm. different realities so that you can help god find that person (laughs) yes indeed indeed And it's interesting, I felt I wanted to mention the shame because one of the things I have worked a lot within myself, especially in the past three months, has been visibility. And if we think about how many great people are on this world that could be a service, but they are holding themselves because there is still some element of blame, of shame, of feeling unjust by any reason. Sometimes feeling I'm not good enough. Who am I to be on this journey? Again, none of that is true. But once we really face what may be there and we are able to reclaim our power, our inner strength, our own inner wisdom, and then we remember who we truly are. And we know that there is no one else that is there that is above us. We all should be, or we all are equal, but most of us, we just cannot see that. 
humans and spirituality it can get very strange like you said you can get a lot of spiritual elitism or spiritual superiority and you can also get the opposite you can get so much people pleasing that there's a lack of integrity going on you know it's just like um it can get very strange <laughs> it can get very very strange um but completely the number I would say it's around 95 percent of spiritual healers are hiding Mm -hmm. there are millions of us and they are hiding and they are they are like stubbornly hiding some of them so much so that they don't even have you know a social media account some of them so much so that they are literally on a house in the mountain somewhere with no wi-fi <laughs> so you're a hundred percent so many of them are hiding and i think you know there's a mix, like I said, of beliefs. There's so much stuff around shame and so much stuff around the hermit archetype that comes up and so much past and present life persecution um, that goes on. Um, yeah, but I, 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 I think the hardest part for most healers is the perfectionism as well. They've got so much shame wrapped around and you have to be perfect to be able to be a, a, a healer that... Um, you know, there comes a point that you just have to get your hands dirty. You just have to get in there. You do the best you can. Yes. Yeah, no, I totally understand. In my case, for example, my husband had an expected heart attack. So myself as a healer, I had to deal with imposter syndrome. And I also had to deal with the fact that uh, I didn't want to leave. I thought if he's in this better place and also being a spiritual medium, knowing where he might be, I just wanted to be with him. You know, but then you realize, actually, if I start carry on and whatever I'm supposed to be doing here, whatever is my purpose that God knows better than me, and find again my way out of this and my strength, as I did, then you just know that when the time is right, things will happen, no matter what. And if we just take life like that and we can surrender of any outcome, even related to, to the business, even related to how much healing the person should and receive or not. Yeah, because it's not about us. We're here just as a channel. We, we are a service when we, we've been guided, you know, to be able to help people within that beautiful healing journey path. But we also need to understand that there is a lot of personal responsibility there and commitment from their part. And I know from my own journey, if we're not ready, if we don't want to commit, no one can heal us. So that inner work, that willingness to want to be that better person, to want to evolve and ascend and be enlightened beings, <laughs> it's all on us too. <laughs> this is quite interesting because a lot of people, when you become very successful, want to take credit for your success. Mm, yes. Right? And it's only when you understand the truth that you just voiced that you get that everyone's success is their own. And you may have contributed some small grain of sand to it. But the reality is that, you know, it's them, it's between them and their creator. You know, how far they can, because I do, I honestly do, you know how, you know how radically honest I am with you guys and you know how mm -hmm. vulnerable I am too. You know, I don't pretend to have everything figured out. Um, but I think I do think that every new level has new level of pressure to it. And I think that you have to develop an extraordinary level of spiritual and emotional strength to handle that space. And we're not all starting from the same line, you know, um, we're incredibly blessed to have, you know, homes and spaces that are safe. Absolutely. Right. Um, and so many people genuinely don't have that. And are still very much in hiding. There's some of my clients in, were in countries where they would get killed if they were found teaching the spiritual teachings that they were that they were doing. Um, you know, some of them were literally doing healings from homes where their abuser was in the next room. You know, and it's a, it, you have to find the mercy to really, you know, know that it's not about like how far somebody gets, but that if you are in a position where you've got to put you in a position to glow up, there's a reason, mm -hmm. you know, and that it, whatever you see on social is not 
half of what goes on like I said the work the time the dedication that it takes to um to show up um you know it's that most of that is marketing the reality is uh you know you really facing building a deeper connection with god every day and you putting in the work that's going to make that sustainable for others um which isn't so trendy <laughs> yes <laughs> indeed <laughs> you know i see the social media posts where people are like oh you know i invested this in that health coach or i made all this money and i spent it on a holiday and i'm like yep i made all this money and i invested it into the hospital it's like my brain isn't on the same things when you're on your mission it's like god has um told you where it's going <laughs> yes. and what it's doing and there is an overflow but there is um with the amount of suffering in there is in the world there's so much to do you know, there's so much to do. And I do, whilst I do think our own pleasure is really important, I think that like, you know, I think our generation does need a little bit of a wake up call to how much service we're, we're called to give back, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's always about what you have for me. What is the offer? But it's not about how can we deeply connect and together we make the difference, you know? I think that so much of it is caught in the collective consciousness belief that we cannot make a difference. And I think that wasn't so much there in the 60s and the 70s. I think there was such a, a much stronger community built in that's corroded and that we're really being called to um, to reactivate. You know, um, there's an illusion of community with online and the Internet, but it's not the same. You mm. know, it's not the same as knowing um, and as having people really solid real people there but it, I, th I also see it healing I do see people pushing to have communities I do see people pushing to um to serve in a massive way I do see people calling for um um you know not just a spiritual awakening but like I said an emotional one and a very practical one um I think there's a like there's so much there's almost like an ache isn't there um for um you know, it's like when you grew up, you had a, a best friend that lived two or three doors down. You knew who your neighbors were. You you played in the street. Now it's, you know, I remember when I moved back um, to my childhood home and, you know, they were shocked that I'd come to the, the the door with a basket to say hello and say, you know, we're, we're moving. They were like, you could tell no one had done that in like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's good stuff. Okay, so what did you get the what did you get the most out of um, medical intuitive? What was your biggest breakthrough? I feel my my biggest breakthrough is is fully be able to truly connect deep, you know, with the divine. I must say because, as I said, all of these years, um, as more as I I thought I have a good relationship with God, I was actually lying to myself. <laughs> I love your honesty. I love it. Now, now we do have an amazing relationship. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's interesting because uh, we were talking about, you know, be able to, to change the world. And I'm a great believer that uh, the world that we can change and it's in total in our power, it's our inner world. And as as we do that and we we work on ourselves, we allow to build this beautiful connection you know, then people can see that within us. They can see those changes. They can see our light shining and they want to be part of that somehow, you know, and that is the truth. So, um, so true. the medical intuitive technique, I think um, the whole six month training, it was extremely intense. Yeah. You know, we had like 40 pieces of uh, homework, assignments and uh you know, and, and some of that you, you you spend hours and hours because it's really deep. You need to go through past lives. You need to go through traumas. You need to talk with your body. You need to learn how to listen to your body. Wow, I wish we could learn that in a school. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, isn't it? I wish they taught us this stuff at school. Yes, instead of the, the first time that's, uh, oh, miss, can I go to the toilet? And you get no, you know, you really understand what are the consequences, what's happening there emotionally with you, because this is where, you know, little traumas can start to and seriously damage you your whole life, as, even as an adult, until you actually understand and be able to heal that. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's be able to, to 
have that deeper healing for myself too because I've been dealing with you know grief it's going to be nearly three years now and uh, the past six months has been really really rewarding for me weaving that journey to really be able to say that I have found that inner peace within me wow that's huge Um, it is it is absolutely huge and 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 make peace with that acceptance too that yes um there is only a, a separation of physical bodies, you know, and that beautiful, you know, soul journey is still, still carry on. And I also want to say the connections that we made, you know, within the group, we were talking about community. You know, we started this course, we was over 70 students and be able to have every single week Q&A sessions once a month practice group and all of the swaps that we do you know between ourselves but we also feel confidence that we understand the techniques and we have enough um, opportunity to practice in between us and then of course work on the case studies for we submit and get your feedback so all of that and wow the amazing support that you and your team have put you know towards all of the, the assistance that, that, that we receive, you know, sometimes even late night hours, we're still receiving, you know, <laughs> messages. <laughs> and and it's, it's so important because sometimes something happens in someone else's life and they can't sleep. But that little message that's going to bring them some guidance, some comfort, some direction, it makes a huge difference. And that same guidance is served to all of us, really, you know, so I really appreciate all the love, all the care, all the support that you have made available because it has been a brilliant experience. You know, how many times I have spent money investing on that personal and spiritual development. And I'm, I'm talking about big names out there. And I don't have not even 10% of the support that you have offered. So I really, truly love and appreciate all of that. Thank you. <laughs> it's the, I, I really am deeply grateful for the team. And um, I hear you. I mm. really, really hear you in the, um, sometimes it's the tiniest thing. It's almost like a feather that makes such a huge difference because you don't feel alone. Absolutely. Um, and it is, um, it's it's beyond what can be taught. You know, they, they, they are, um, I think bo- all the people inside the community and all the people on the team, they're light workers in their own right. You know, it's not something I ask for. It's just something that g- comes from their heart, mm-hmm. um, which I think it makes it pretty beautiful. <laughs> yes. Um, but um, yeah, it makes a huge difference. And um, it's funny how they're they're very much there for me as well. It's very it's very um, it's such a blessing to work with other psychic people. <laughs> and it's so funny as well because. They message you quite a few times. I had Rosie or her or or um students, you know, message me going, Sky, are you okay? And I'd be like, no, <laughs> no, doing the healing. Not okay. <laughs> right. Um, and it's it, it because it is such a strong container, there are um, you know, growth swells and 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 um blind spots that you're not expecting as well. And it's it makes a huge difference to have people who um can see you but still let you be you. You know, you don't have to be superhuman. You don't have to fake that you're an an enlightened teacher. They're not going to lose respect for you because you are vulnerable and you fall down. You know, and that makes a huge difference as well. It makes you able, like you said, to walk a message here or do stuff there because you're not drained. There, it's a you're you're receiving as well as giving you know it's equal it's not you're giving and everyone else is taking it's you're all receiving from each other and it makes it sustainable right absolutely so i'll ask you sky what what have you learned from from us this group two you're gonna go for your third one at the end of the year so what have you learned from us (laughs) oh you guys like i think for starters you guys really stretched me because the, especially like with the wounds document, when you guys said we want the, the core wounds in writing. And I remember thinking, okay, and deciding that, you know, I'll write down as much as I know, and we'll see what comes of it. And um, 
I remember having to choose at that point because I remember my, my, my calendar was still closed. And I remember having to choose, do I, can I open it or can I give what, what is being asked? And I remember the, the consciousness of you guys very clearly saying that, you know, this was not just, you were asking for this for it to serve humanity. And I remember, like you said, like the same way as you guys making your trauma tree for mm -hmm. me, writing that wounds document was such a deeply triggering process. It was like, like you said, I spent hours sometimes on a little thing that looked like 500 words or whatever, but it would take to pull that out. Do you know what I mean? And then the same thing with the diseases document. You guys have no idea. Like you guys are the second round, but I've been resisting that document for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a huge breakthrough for me. And it was because you guys were such a safe space. And I knew that I could share it with you without you abusing it or without you using it as a way to bypass being present with the client that I felt safe bringing that forward so that was big too um and you I could be if I'm completely honest like some students are not as kind as you guys you guys have been so ridiculously kind um every time you know that I've I've not been fast enough on something or I've had to find a better way of meeting you guys. You gave me the space and the time to do that, you know, and you were, you were always very honest with me, you know, when you were scared or when you, and it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like a, you, I was never blamed for you guys being scared. It was very much of, like you said, I'm scared. Can we work through it together? And that worked so well. Um, I think the last thing, the unexpected thing was the witchy stuff, because I think there was a few in the group that were really, really went deep into the witch wound archetype. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I started getting all these, um, I kid you not, I started getting all this um, stuff around um, magic and spells and um, uh, uh, like, you know, like ancient like herbs, which is where the, um, uh, the plant medicine thing started. And I was like, okay, this isn't me, this is you. <laughs> Because I haven't done any work on this and it's like exploding through my being. <laughs> and I remember messaging um, Matthew and Claire Gor Gorman, who are other students on the course, and going, What did you two do? <laughs> because it's coming out. <laughs> um, and the other thing that, that I was not going to say at all, but that's come out very much is like the kids, because I was, I think I was very afraid of doing medical healing for children. Um, you know, particularly because I was afraid of how people could abuse their healing stuff. And you guys have made it, um, you know, I'm, you guys are ready for it, you know, and I'm not scared of going there. Whereas before the only thing that can re could really knock me off was I'm um, dealing with sick kids mm -hmm. and yeah. the way that some of you have handled that in this course, you know, um, really taught me a lot. You know, you guys are really brilliant at what you do. And I'm really grateful to have had you in every way, shape or form. Um, it's you guys have been a force <laughs> and you still are a force. Um, yeah, it's been really, really good. So it's not it's been a huge amount of growth. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I'm sure everybody will appreciate to learn all of that from you. <laughs> Oh, yeah there was there's a lot but it's exactly like what we were discussing about when you're holding a container for for people anything you say can then trigger a wave of other people going through the same stuff so I, I'm very careful with what I share until after I really believe in like the Course in Miracles thing if you start as a teacher and then you continue as a friend yeah. but um the container is the container for a reason you know it's a sacred it's a sacred thing um and then it's kind of like a constellation, you know, it's not permanent, but it's necessary because of the amount of stuff that comes up. <laughs> no, totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So last question, what would you say, because you are already a very gifted healer and like you said, you've done a lot of certifications and things like that. So what would you say to somebody that's thinking about joining and is already in their power, um, but is feeling that call? What I would say is whatever you are on your journey it doesn't matter because the sky will be able to support you through all the way but also the whole material of the medical intuitive have been done in a specifically order to help you to go smoothly through that journey too 
So even if you feel that by the end of the six months, you're not ready to work externally to, you know, you will know you have done a really beautiful, deep work within yourself. And also we just have mentioned about this beautiful container, which is, you know, the group in itself. And there's so much support from each other there and vulnerability um, has been one of the highlights for me. You know, how everybody show up real and people are just happy that they can say whatever is there you know, causing any sort of blockage, illness, it doesn't matter. They are real in sharing because they're there, because they want that help. And once we ask for help, the universe just answer us. So if you feel the call, maybe the course is for you and you'll be answering, you know, that beautiful call that can support you and totally transform your journey. Yep. If you're happy to do the work and glow up, we're here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Marcel. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, really talking with you and having a chance to really recap, isn't it? Because it's nice to have that intimacy and when it's outside of class as well, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. Uh, I've put all of Marcella's information, all of her um, one-to-one sessions, her incredible courses underneath this video. So if you're feeling her light, if you're feeling her mediumship skills, if you have some tough grief or traumas and things that you'd like to work through, this woman is like a laser beam, right? You'll get like some raw, unconditional truth straight from the mouth of creator. And that's probably exactly what you need, right? Um, we could not have been more proud to have had her with us um, and more grateful that she came on this journey with us. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.